Hi guys, uh, this is Tom. And this is Ramon, and you're listening to Conscious TV. So, I hear we have um, nobody on the show today. Yeah, isn't that something else? We do have nobody. And nobody just happens to be an internationally known speaker, author, and contactee. He's founder of the Self Mastery Earth Institute, the Science, Spirit, and World Transformation Conferences, as well as the East Eddie Ranch, an internationally known UFO and paranormal hotspot. He's the author of Reunion with Source, Becoming Gods 1 and 2, and his latest bestseller, The Ultimate Soul Journey. Hey, nobody, how you doing tonight? No, doing great. How you doing? And let's not forget also part-time uh, stand-up comedian. Oh, yeah, yeah, he is. <laughs> so, James, first question, why, you know, so people don't think we're insulting you, why would we call you nobody? What's the story behind uh, that? I've always called myself nobody, and at the Science, uh, Spirit, and World Transformation Conference, my name badge said nobody, and... Uh, and the reason I do that is so people don't get into any kind of guru or worship mode or, or anything of that nature. And, and it also keeps the humility down, and, and uh, uh, I don't have to live up to anybody's standards that way. <laughs> so <laughs> Awesome. awesome. So I don't, I don't have to make any uh, – draw any golden caps of you? Oh, you haven't done that yet? <laughs> <laughs> so – Tom, you want to ask him the first yeah. question? So, James, there's been some, uh, I, I've uh, been keeping track of you. There have been some uh, pretty interesting <laughs> things going on there the last few days. Uh, what's up with yeah. the planes flying around? <laughs> it's getting a little crazy. Uh, we have a crew here. It's it's really nice. Um, it, it's uh, uh, Michael and Amy here, and they're they're doing a blog. It's on the um it's on the footage there. They're doing a, a nice little. They have a oh some kind of a network. <laughs> it's, it's slipping my mind right now the name of it, but I'll get to it. But anyway, they uh, they're doing a film here, and while they were here, uh, we had the uh, really nice golden ship fly right over the house. You know, like they always do, just like they did at the last big conference, and uh, you know, with all the witnesses. But they, you know, they did their usual, the big golden ship or, or big pink orange ship or whatever came flying right over the house. And on it was a jet. This, this jet was vectoring in on it. And, I mean, it was loud. It was coming right in on it with all of its lights on and everything else. And then all of a sudden, it just got really quiet and no flashing lights on the jet. And it just vanished. And And so... To me, there's probably two possibilities. One, they have incredible stealth technology where they have ability to cancel out their sound and, and you know, shutting off their lights, basically. Uh, we couldn't see anything. And it was, you know, the moon, it was flying right into the moon, which the UFO flew right underneath the moon, you know, from, a, you know, actually the moon's further away than, <laughs> than here. But, um, right. and, you know, from our perspective, you know, where it was sitting, it flew underneath the moon. And, uh, uh, the jet was vectoring right in on it, and it just vanished. And and then to top it off, the next day, we had three black uh, F-15s, probably F-15 or F-15, 16s. They had the dual tail and uh, no markings, nothing on them. They flew right over the ranch, banked, and were looking down on us. And we could look right into the cockpit with these guys. I mean, wow. I, you could see right in the cockpit. They were that close. And then they came around for their second pass and, and flew around the valley, and we actually got them on film on the second pass. So, so it was it was uh, you know quite a, quite an interesting little display there. You know, not just with the UFOs, but with the military as well, or right. whoever these guys were. So, if there's nothing happening at your ranch, as some people say, then um, they're just <laughs> saying stopping by to say hi because you're so yeah. such a nice guy, James. Yeah, they just happen to be, you know, we just happen to be in their flight path on a regular basis. You know, the black helicopters and, and the these strange ones. unmarked jets. You know, they they seem to just fly and uh, and bank and go right over the top of our house on a regular basis. And and you know, it's just it's just a, a random accident, I guess. <laughs> so, 
I, I would like to get into a little bit what's um let's call it the elephant in the room breaking down the walls right now. <laughs> it's it, um <laughs> So the whole thing with um, Obama and the um, troops over in Europe—it's in Europe they're at now, right? Ten thousand, something like ten thousand troops and I don't know. There's there's thirty-two like ships, or something like that. I'm not sure how many ships were involved with this, and uh, you know, it's 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 pretty interesting. I think uh, that was maybe a show of muscle or whatever to go over there and and. Uh, it didn't really work because nobody was intimidated by it, and they told him to get his act together. I think it's kind of funny that uh, we have uh, missiles going off of our coast while he's over there flexing his muscles. Somebody else may be over here flexing <laughs> theirs. <laughs> yeah. You know what's even funnier is the Chinese sub surfaced right in the middle of the war games out in the Pacific, and they didn't even know it was there, and it surfaced right in the middle, you know, next to an aircraft carrier. So. Wow, well, I hadn't heard that know. one. No, oh, I didn't yeah. hear that one. Oh yeah, it's check it out. Just it, you can Google it. But uh, you know, between that and between that missile launch and what seemed to be a UFO right next to it, now there's a lot of controversy over whether that's a helicopter or a UFO. And you know, when I look closely at this, and I've seen these motherships before, they have this flashing light on the very top of them. And in the middle of the of the these ships, and then they glow at the back. They have a strange glow at the back. Well, this object sitting there had a glow at the back. It had that flashing strobe right in the middle where it should be. And if this was a helicopter, their landing lights were on the back of the helicopter, not on the front. And and I don't think helicopters land in reverse, to my knowledge. So so uh, yeah, you know, it doesn't make sense say it's a helicopter i'm not you know it it doesn't you know just looking at the footage why would this helicopter that was going towards the missile obviously according to the footage why would it have lights in the back like this bright you know circular light in the back of it it, it just makes no sense why would it be getting scrubbed out of all the uh, replays you know yeah the, exactly i mean yeah. if it's a helicopter why scrub it out so. Yeah, if if anything, then they would use say no, it's a helicopter, and this is what it was doing. But my question is, um, what's your gut feeling with the whole thing with the woman who um, claims that it was like the Palladians and and they had shot down that missile that he was um, trying to start a war with Iran, according to her. I forgot her name. Uh, Colleen Thomas, I think. Oh, yeah, she's yeah. she's something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want I yeah. I I, li I listen to her and I just it just almost makes me puts me on the floor laughing. <laughs> you know, you know, to me, I got to give her kudos, you know, because she's just like in your face oh, and she... and telling Obama the way it is and and uh, everything else. I got to give her kudos for yeah. that. You know, she's, she's got some guts. She's definitely. She definitely... Yeah, and you know she is saying a lot of very truthful information and just blurting it out there. You know, but uh, uh, you know, towards the end, it kind of loses me a little bit. You know, when a lot of the other things come out, I just yeah, I'm like, oh man. You know. Yeah. But I think people need to go within and start listening within. You know, and stop listening to the TVs and things like that to gain. You know, or seek out alternative talk shows like this one or other ones to get a more accurate uh, uh, image of what's really going on because uh, the it, it's just crazy now. The mainstream, as you said, they scrubbed out that helicopter supposedly. Why did they scrub it out? Uh, maybe it wasn't a helicopter. It makes no sense why they would scrub it out unless it was something they didn't want people to see. And obviously, somebody did launch a missile. Nobody knew about it. Nobody's claiming it on our side. Uh, so, so my feeling is having that Chinese uh, incident where they where they pop their sub up right in the middle of our our uh, war games without us even knowing it. <laughs> yeah. And they have been appearing off the coast, you know, randomly. So uh, they have some pretty good technology, pretty good stealth technology, yeah. and they're definitely. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Problem. And I think 
also, too, is that we have a long history of doing that off of their coast and shooting off missiles and things like that right on the edge and, and flexing our muscles. So I think, you know, they might just be flexing their muscles a little bit, saying, hey, you know, yeah. you guys owe us a lot of money. <laughs> you know, you, uh, yeah. you've made a lot of agreements you're not uh, coming through with. And, uh, you know, don't, don't think you can use your war industry to suppress or, or, you know, make a, a wholesale theft out of this or something of that nature. Who knows? I mean, there could be all kinds of implications in this. Yeah. yeah. So so I uh, want to kind of take this just a little bit different direction here. Uh, you know, we I've, I've actually uh, uh, had you do a clearing on me, and uh, the the process that you go through in a clearing with the table tipping and, and uh, the male yeah. and female aspect of all that and – uh, I kind of want to go go into. Uh, uh, I want to understand what you actually are experiencing yourself. What sensations are you feeling? Uh, and the reason I want to go this direction is, is there's a lot of people out there right now that are waking up, and are starting to ask those questions. Are starting to have these experiences and getting sensations that they may not understand from like their guides or. Uh, an entity that's actually trying to help them or to harm them, uh, and exactly. what what kind of sensations and what uh, significators of of the positive or negative element do you receive, and how do you sense that? Well, basically, the first thing we do before even the self mastery classes or teaching any meditation techniques or anything, we teach people how to heal unseen negative influences and there's an old saying just because you're dead doesn't mean you're enlightened <laughs> uh, so there you know there's a lot of discarnates out there there's some uh freaky stuff going on in the astral level that if you start getting out of body or opening up to a greater uh fields of energy you know we really need to learn how to heal any unseen negative influences and people that don't do that or don't clear their space or keep the space clear or actually setting people up, you know, that for other entities sometimes can jump in and create a lot of problems in the in the future. So uh, I've seen that so many times with certain ceremonies, you know, like especially if they're using kind of any kind of roots or chemicals or, or if they're doing like a seance or things of that nature. If you don't know what you're doing and you don't clear your space and maintain that space, you can get into to real trouble with that. So... The, the first thing we do is clear any unseen negative influences, and I feel a big release and an expansion when we do that process. And when we welcome the masters in uh, and, and identify the person's main teacher and guide, each guide has an energy signature, and I feel that energy signature when they come in. What, what's, so, the, what's that actually, what's the sensation that you feel, if you can describe that a little bit? Well, well, you know, each one is different, but when you're working with seventh dimensional beings, you'll feel the top of your head light up. You'll feel like you're wearing a beanie on your head, like energy all around the top of your head. You'll feel like <laughs> a little pressure on your third eye. I mean, you guys are feeling that right now, I can tell. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so so We've just got... us connecting right now, that's going on. So, But you'll feel a little fresh in your third eye sometimes. But sometimes, like when the Palladians come in, I'll feel all this tingling down my left side. And and when the Orion Council of Light, those guys come in, I'll feel it on my right side. It, it's really interesting. Or, or if the Andromedans come, I just feel a real intense energy. And they're mythologically known as archangels. And uh, like when Jesus comes in, I get tears. I start getting tears. And it's not sadness. It's tears of joy. And, uh, you know, Mary has this real just pure love energy that comes in, this divine feminine energy. And, and uh, uh, so they're all different. And, and Let's not forget this, about like, Kazekiel. Yeah, Kazekiel. <laughs> he's the god of eternal bliss. Everybody yeah, just starts he's... laughing when he comes in. You know, so. I think he's so hanging he can... out with us right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so basically uh, – you know, that's when he comes in, everybody just starts busting up. And, you know, we have these, you know, you've met some of these people like Giorgio, you know, the, uh, uh, the uh, Franciscan, Franciscan monk. monk, yeah. And some of these other guys come in, and when Kaziko comes in, they just sit there 
and shake and full body shaking laughter like it's amazing and they have you know a major healing in the process and and so so basically what that's the energy i experience and then when we start going into releasing things like the past life things and things of that nature i actually see and i feel the energies where they're stuck in the body uh as we're going through that, I feel the same thing the person is feeling as they're releasing and going through the process, you know, and I feel when they have a big emotional release, you know, and, and when we access the major traumas that they're dealing with, I feel that too. It goes through my body as well. So, so that's kind of an intense one. And so, so you said, you, after, so you said you, but, you see it, you actually see these blockages. Uh, how do you see that? Yeah. What what is what's that sensation? Do you like? Is it a visual thing? That's like, or is it uh, like a download. third eye type? Yeah, it's a third kind of a third eye thing, and I just see real clearly the event happening. I'll see the person. Yeah, you know, I'll get a quick visual like with them in a certain wearing a certain outfit, a certain dress in a certain century and I'll get the emotional feeling around that and they'll show me, you know, where they're just like in the dark ages and it's very dark and, and the energy's deep sadness and there's poverty, you know, a lot of sickness and and uh, you know, people sleeping on straw and, and wherever they can get warm and, and you know, things like that. So so a lot of uh uh you know, things when I see an event or I see a life or whatever, it's it's like the third eye opens and I and I see it. I actually see, and this gets real bizarre because some people have past lives that aren't even here. They're not on this planet. Uh, they have nothing to do with this planet, and they're in bodies that are not. They're humanoid, but they're not exactly human. So so that gets really interesting. But you know, as eternal souls we've been all over the universe and been all through the higher dimensions came from the source itself and we've dropped down into this dimension now this physical dimension and having a physical experience yeah yeah so uh, one of my questions to to you james is um how far down do you think we are in the uh birth canal oh as far as the new birth yeah because I, I feel like we're we're pretty far down now. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. It's right around the corner. Uh, what I'm getting right now is that uh, the Palladians have been talking a lot about about that. And they said the scepter's been passed and the ultra-dimensional beings, the masters, the angelic kingdom, all of them are coming in right now. And and the there's going to be a huge cleansing process uh and you know a major awakening and healing process done through frequency vibration the earth is going through some intense cleansings uh the these this tyranny program we have running now that has just zero respect for for life you know the reckless greed going on is all collapsing in on itself it's being pushed to the surface so, you know, we're seeing this with the banksters, with the oil company, with the Gulf Oil, what they did there to the Gulf. Uh, it's still it's still kind of insane what's happening there. It, it, there's people there that, uh, like John Hutchinson, I guess, he right. has that device, you know, that is getting results and it's cleaning up. That, and the Coast Guard won't let him do it. Did you hear he got uh, booted out the other day? Oh, yeah, he did? Yeah, he got booted yeah. out someplace or other yeah yeah, yeah and so that's not surprising using, yeah he's using this high frequency device and they're getting results and the ocean is cleaning up and the water when you use this device the water actually becomes self-cleaning but uh you know the, they should be sh shuttling him around on a coast guard carrier <laughs> or yeah. whatever they got available and and be totally involved in this 100 percent but we we're finding out that you know we've lost control of everything we've lost control of the coast guard the police forces everything is all under the control of these other guys and they're not out to really clean up the planet or do whatever they're doing they're out to protect the very guys that made the mess and and to actually hinder the cleanup processes so they're still spraying core exit out there, that, and, and that's what they don't want. They said, well, you're going to counteract our toxins we're using. You know, it's going, 
Yeah, I am. You know, that's what I'm supposed to do. You know, so. Yeah. It's it's just insanity. It's pure, it's pure ignorance, pure insanity, and reckless greed, and no respect at all for humanity. In the earth. It's unbelievable what's going on, and it's all surfacing. Yeah. So it. It, it seems to me like the controllers have used the mystical forces throughout history to control the masses in one way or another. And then the, the thought comes to me to, to, use, to try to use those same first forces to turn the tables on them. You know, like the, the secret societies uh, throughout history have uh, gathered all these ancient artifacts and texts that explain how to use this creative, our creative force and how to manipulate it to their own ends. Uh, but through history, there's been leaks, and especially now with the Internet and all this information that's available to everybody, that this, this material is starting to come to the surface, and people are starting to put things together. Uh, you think we're going to be able to get this stuff to work to actually counteract what they're doing? Oh, definitely. The, uh, what's going on right now is that we have this – it's just incredible energy. As I was saying before, the the uh, prime directive is off not, right now. It's a uh, hands-on policy. The higher beings are coming in and, uh, you know, putting an end to this tyranny, reckless greed program. So with their frequencies and their energies and with us on the ground initiating that and calling on that and asking for help, uh, it's pretty much a done deal. The The earth is evolving. She's moving to the next level. We have a choice whether or not we take that trip and, and go for that ride that she's already chosen to go on. She's got all the support in the multiverse in this process. So so basically now the bottom line is like who is going to be around, you know, with the shift? Who's going to be part of the ascension process? Uh, who's going to, you know, try to stop it and work against it because that energy is going to be directly reflected back on whoever's doing it. So we're moving into a time compression where everything is going to be accelerated. Uh, the action reaction or karma is going to be accelerated and energized. The the uh, the truth is going to be energized, you know, coming up and surfacing. And so it's just a short matter of time within the next year and a half, you're going to see all of this come right up to the surface for for uh, everybody to take a, a good look at. And and I think it's up to each and every one of us just not to be a willing participant in this nonsense anymore, to choose to work only in the highest and best good of humanity and the earth and uh, to stop doing anything that might be detrimental to to our fellow humans, to the earth, and to the next generations. James, have you had a chance to see the um, – there's some NASA pictures where they found these – I don't know how to describe them. In the middle of our galaxy is these two kind of like bubbles, and each yes. one of them are about 25 light years um, in big. Do you, uh -huh. do you think that's um, – what they're taking a picture of is the whole, what they call like the gravitational shift or the energies that are coming in that are kind of like speeding everything up, or do you think that's a whole different phenomenon? You know, in looking at that and knowing the way creation works, um, everything comes from the void, you know, and, and the black hole at the center of this Milky Way galaxy uh, is where everything comes out. Some some people say we're in the Sagittarius galaxy that's intertwined in the Milky Way galaxy, but uh, it doesn't matter. Every every galaxy has at its core, you know, a black hole, and even believe it or not, the suns are actually a black hole. So a star or a sun, what you're seeing is the event horizon around a black hole, and when you see a sunspot, why is it black? You know, why is you know, there's big cracks in the sun lately, and they're looking through, and they're going, wait a second, it's black. It's empty in there. What's going on? You know, this doesn't add up with our program. So so basically, there's a lot more to the universe going on than we know. And, and I would say maybe this, at the center of our universe right now, we're going through a huge shift, and there's a pump going on of higher consciousness and energy. And I know we're getting bombarded with cosmic rays right now. The the whole solar system is moving to a new place in the universe that's highly charged. 
Uh, we're moving into alignment with galactic plane, and there's some incoming things coming through here that are going to have some effects. So, so we are definitely in the middle of just phenomenal changes on every level, and uh, I think we're going to have to to uh, rise to the occasion and actually get all the help we can get to get through these times. Boy, I can sure attest to those uh, vibrational changes. My uh, just in the last uh, geez uh, month. My meditations have the vibration that I experience when I start opening my chakras is, is, uh, is has increased tenfold. And instead of oh. instead of them opening one at a time like they like I used to do, now as soon as I as soon as I go into meditation, it's like boom, everything's lit up. It's uh, something mm -hmm. else. James, I got a funny story with. Um... I think one of these days they're gonna throw me in a psych in the psych ward because sometimes I um I'll be walking into the train and then boom I get hit with these energies on my head and I start cracking up to myself and in Japan people are very into themselves and they don't there's no such thing as small talk we don't really you know if I introduce you to a person they'll friend they're friendly to you but on the train they just don't really talk to each other. And I'll just sit there and just cracking up, and everybody's just looking at me like, what's wrong with this foreigner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they need that. You know, you're being a, a anchor for that higher consciousness and energy, and it's exactly what they need. So have you been getting any kind of uh, new messages for any sorts of events that are coming up in the near future? You know, basically, they they are, you know... When they talk in the beings that I've been working with lately, they're sounding almost biblical. And and they're talking about God as a frequency and a force and that they have their gods, their Pleiadian gods and other god beings that are one with this force. And and you know, we have to go beyond that to who created them. There is even a force beyond that, but there are beings that are unique yet one with this higher consciousness and energy that are coming in right now to assist in this process and this awakening and healing process. So the, the frequencies and the forces and the consciousness that are coming in right now are, are just beyond measure there. There, no man can stop this. I don't care what toys you've got. If you've got harp, chemtrails, you name it, uh, all these psychotronic games are playing everything. All that stuff is just basically digging their own grave by trying to initiate these things because they aren't going to work in the future. And, you know, whatever karma they build up, they're going to have to experience. Whatever pain or suffering or sickness or illness, anything they've caused others, they're, they're going to have to experience because you can't make it to the left next level until you go through that. And it's almost like the plane of bliss is coming to the earth, and you can't get into the, the plane of bliss until you're done with your karma, until you've given up your, your nonsense, you know. So... So basically, you know, on one level, we have, you know, the, the ultimate eraser within us, which is our own God self, uh, which can clear these things once we're serious. We can't fool our souls and say, okay, I forgive myself, so I'm cool. It doesn't, <laughs> but it doesn't work that way. <laughs> no, <laughs> not quite. Be, yeah, you have to be very, very serious. You have to have pure intent. Uh uh, you know, your soul knows whether or not you're just giving this lip service or not. So, you know, and a little restitution might be a good idea, too. So, uh, you know, basically it's that we have to forgive ourselves. We have to forgive others. Uh, you know, drop this this old program. Get off this wheel of, of victim, persecutor, savior program that we've got going. We have to step out of this whole thing and become the observer and and just become one with that pure, loving, joyous, blissful God within us, and then we can step off this wheel and and all this nonsense. But you know, we we need to do that to become anchors of this higher consciousness and energy. And and once we do that, we're going to be affecting everybody around us. Uh, like Ezekiel said, you have no idea what is happening on the outskirts of your aura and how many people you're affecting just by by walking the walk and. Uh, uh, you know, you know, do just by uh, focusing on that love and joy and bliss and becoming it. Yeah, this is this uh, this project that Ramona and I have started here with this show is is part of our path as far as as far as us 
reaching out and trying to spread some of what we are. And uh, I, I don't know, it's just like the next step in our evolution, our own soul evolution, is to... Yeah, uh, it's, it it um, came together really easy, James. Um, huh? And I remember you, you saying something about that, the when when it's time for you to do something things just happen really fast and and that's how the show yeah. happened with us it was you know i i asked him about it one day and almost what two weeks three weeks later you know that was that was two and a half that was three weeks ago <laughs> yeah yeah oh. yeah it's amazing when you get aligned with your soul uh, everything just goes falls right into place. If you're having all kinds of serious problems and everything else, your ego is probably running the show. Yeah, that, I was going to ask you about that because I remember hearing you say something about that uh, on one of your shows. The when, for example, people always say, "Oh, you know, I was trying to listen to my heart and I end up getting hurt or I end up." mistrusting this person because I was listening to my heart and, and so my question to you is is that person really listening to their heart or are they listening to an imitation of ego. the heart yeah to the ego yeah yeah it's it's tricky because you're you have to figure out what level of emotion you're working on and and sometimes you know, people will have an experience of, God, I just felt I was supposed to do this, and it turned out so bad. Why did this happen? Well, it maybe it didn't turn out bad. Maybe you needed that experience. You needed to finish exactly. uh, whatever karma, whatever else you've got going on there. Uh, that was something that you needed to walk through and gain the wisdom from that experience and, and uh, let it settle into the soul and move on. So. You know, I look at everything in my life, and I've had some crazy stuff happen, and and some things that that probably would have flattened most people, and and they'd probably give up on humanity altogether. <laughs> you know, uh, my life. But I always look at each one of those events, and when I pulled back from spirit and looked back on it and saw the big picture, I could see real clearly that uh, that that was necessary as part of my own soul evolution. And I wouldn't change a thing. And and some of the people I were involved with was uh, just some karmic lessons that I needed to complete and finish, and understandings I needed to get out of that experience. And and so uh, basically that was uh, what it was all about. And and I think that's what's important is not to be a victim. You know, don't fall into the poor me or I should have, could have. You know, that's they say that. You know, hell is paved with I should have, I could have, or it shouldn't be this way. You know, they have all these sayings about that. Hmm. You know, we need to just let go of that and, and just say, well, you know, I I never made a mistake. I manifested a lot of things. I gained a lot of wisdom. You know, now I know what I don't want, and I'm going to go forward and create what I do want. Yep, yep. Yeah. The, <laughs> I'm I'm laughing in the background because I, I, I hear it so much in – and it kind of makes me disappointed when I hear people say um, when they want to do something in their life and they don't do it because of some poor excuse. And I'll give you an example. A friend of mine's um, he's around the same age and he wants to travel and he's never traveled and stuff like that. And I'm telling him, why not? You're you're not married. You you live with your brothers. I mean, your job is not a career. What? What do you have holding you back? What are you scared of? I'm just not like you. What do you mean? We're not any different. Except that, you know, you're from one part of the country and I'm from another. Like, I don't see the difference why you're holding yourself back. And I feel that, that we do that so much in, in so many different things that we hold mm -hmm. ourselves back. Um, well, it's fear of change. You know, people people are comfortable they have their comfort zone and they don't want any changes in that comfort zone and and they're running these what if programs and you know a lot of fear and things like that so they just never really go anywhere and and uh, i always tell people you know if you want to do something just do it you know launch your boat and make course corrections along the way but you know don't sit back and try to you know pick this thing apart and do what if scenarios and everything else if your soul's telling you to do something, you know, get off your butt and do it. 
Exactly. Exactly. What advice would you have for people who are, are trying to move in into their karma and clear everything up for themselves? And, um, you know, we, along the way, we pick up so much baggage and we put it away. And then when we start to face our demons or just open the closet and everything just slaps you in the face, what what advice yeah. would you have for those people? Because as far as for me, when ever you sit there and you face these emotions, they could be really strong and sometimes to the point where you feel like you're about to be broken by them. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, that basically you need to go through them. Just stop resisting it. And everybody has this, like I'm saying, we have this like total loving, joyous God being within us. Everybody does. There's not one person that doesn't have that. And, you know, if you... If you ask for help and then go through it, feel it, you know, feel it all the way through. Don't don't resist anymore because resistance is what's causing all the pain and avoiding. But just go through it, you know, face your fears, you know, go through the pain, you know, don't hold back. Just let it move on through. Uh, you'll, you'll see anybody that has a huge awakening, uh, before that awakening, they go through rage, anger, sometimes they go through deep sadness they're crying you know there are all kinds of crazy stuff is going on and and that's just basically uh the process because you have to go through all that to get to the next level so what i say is surrender just surrender the god within you uh learn how to do the clearing work you know you can you can uh, there's a lot of process oriented therapies out there and we do them as well uh but you know find somebody that help you bust through those a safe place or somebody you can talk to that you feel good about that is connected and uh and just go go through it you know just blast on through it one i'll never forget i I had this woman here a mother and her daughter and her daughter was just totally tapped in uh amazing girl and and so her mom came up and we're doing some clearing work and, and actually isis started coming through and uh, she's one of the Egyptian goddesses. And, and she turns around. She, she comes to this 14-year-old girl. And this girl turns around and looks at me. And she goes, she said, you have to keep loving. And she said, no matter how hard it hurts, she said, you have to keep loving. You have Love is the only way out. She said, you have to, to go. You know, you can't close down. And, and uh, it was so powerful. And I realized, and I was going through a relationship that make up Time and everything else and it was so powerful and I realized that my fear and my resistance and my blocking that love and and having all these these uh, oh, contingencies around that love or or demands around that love and things like that all the manipulations around that love all that stuff was causing me severe pain and I had to love no matter what and so You know, I went through and I just totally forgave. You know, it was a total, uh, uh, basically, like every issue you could think of came up, like, in in this situation. Because it was like total betrayal, you know, stick a knife in your heart, twist it ten times, you know, abandonment. And just cruel, you know, stuff. And I just, I sucked it up, you know, and went through the whole thing. Felt it, you know, all the way through. And then all of a sudden I just blew through the other side and it was just amazing. And, and I found this space that was unshakable, this unshakable love and, and sovereign love, you might say, where I was just was love. I wasn't in need of anything outside myself. And, and it, you know, ever since then. And so I, I blessed that situation. It was a great learning process. And and it's something that, you know, we, we have to stop putting our love, our, our acceptance, our approval, everything, we have to stop putting that outside of ourselves on other people and having expectations around them being being the fulfillment of that. We have to find that within ourselves. Right. So, James, what do you uh, – you know, you're familiar with the Sophia uh, story, correct? Uh, I think so. <laughs> the so, – Sophia, uh, the the uh, oh the spirit of the earth or whatever they call it, Gaia. Gaia. Okay. Uh, 
where she emanated from the center of the galaxy, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I was just kind of kind of wondering uh, if you were very familiar with it, what you thought about that whole theory, uh, that and the Archons that were one of the byproducts of her manifestation. And hmm. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure that whole story. Uh, I know one thing, the Divine Feminine is coming in strong right now. And it's just breaking down this old uh, patriarchal program that's ego-driven. Uh, that definitely is happening, uh, you know. So I do know that. And, and uh, you know, there's the Shekinah energies, the divine feminine energies that are, are pressing in very hard. Uh, I don't know exactly that Sophia story. It sounds like it came out of... Uh, it was Gnostic. Was it was out of the Gnostic writings, Uh the uh, uh, the Nag Hammadi stuff. Oh, okay. Right. It's yeah, uh, yeah. I can't remember oh. the name of the book that was in uh, something of the creation or something like that. I can't remember the exact name of that book. Uh, yeah, but, I'll have to go back and look at that. I I was familiar with some of those things like years ago, and I'm not exactly sure how that story goes, so I can't totally comment on it. But. Well, the Archon, the Archon in that myth has really intrigued me here recently. Uh, it, the Archons are basically the the little devils that uh, attach to people, and and uh, you know they their their sustenance is the negative energies that we exude through fear and yeah. and anger and all those sort of things. Uh, mm -hmm. But. Anyways. <laughs> well, they do exist. I mean, they're definitely out there. We, we're always clearing those little buggers away. So uh, there's – there's. Well, my understanding, a lot of the Egyptian stuff, you can actually see the different levels of beings that they have, you know, on their temples. And on the lowest level, you see some real demonic beings and manipulating beings and some, you know, looks like even some greys and kind of reptilian-type beings. And then you move up the levels and you see some, some other beings that are just kind of human stuck in lust or things like that, you know, and kind of messed up. And then the middle level, you'd have just your basic civilization, your, your basic people. And then the higher level, you'd have illuminated people. And then above that, you'd have the gods, you know. So um, I think that's a pretty accurate reality as far as, there are low-level beings. There are low-level ETs. There's low-level humans. Uh, you know, there's sorcerers. There's all kinds of energy out there that it's you're better to avoid. And, you know, I've noticed one thing. I love what uh, I was talking to. I think it was Graham Hancock that said that, where he was talking about some of the shamans that he met. He said that there were some shamans that were not uh, – not of the light, and he said they all hit that wall where they have a choice. Are they going to go into full service mode, or are they going to use their abilities for, uh, you know, either material gain or sexual gain or whatever? Are they service going to, use their to self. Experience? Service to self, exactly, and right. they hit that wall, and they have to make that decision. So, right. so I just see that, you know, all of us have that, choice and i'm seeing there's a lot of people on the planet right now ha have totally aligned with service to self and and it's being amplified right now and you can see it you know with the banksters and the oil companies everything else you're and the you know pharmaceutical companies it's like reckless greed with no respect for life on right. on any level and and it's 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 very sad that that they've taken that path but that path is going to that is the downward spiral, and it will collapse, and it's not going to be part of the future of the Earth. Right. Yeah. Well, this this is all all really closely parallels the uh, raw material, uh, mm -hmm. it, as far as what's happening in the world today. And they say that the yeah. the, the service to self people uh, can't go past the fifth uh, dimension. They're they're yeah, oh, yeah. they're just no way they physically because the, the sixth dimension is unity. And uh, mm -hmm. that's completely opposite of the uh, service to self, you know. It's, it's... I don't think they can get into the fifth dimension. They're more in the fourth. But uh, that's my understanding. The low levels on the fourth dimension are where a lot of this nonsense hangs out. And then you get up in the mid-levels and they're everyday people. 
and then the higher levels of the fourth dimension are teachers and you can have guides and healers and wonderful people there, but they're stuck on the wheel because they have some cultural or religious belief that separates them. You know, they don't see the creator and everyone and everything. They have some kind of a division, and so they're stuck on the wheel. But after they get off the wheel into the fifth dimension, that's usually uh, where you drop those programs and you, you're you aligned with universal love and, you know, you see the creator in all creation. Um, I wanted to ask you before we run out of time um, about the experience when someone known you the crystal skull over at the ranch and I heard rumors that it was quite an experience yeah yeah can you uh, you should call this the the uh, Ramon material (laughs) (laughs) oh that's good Oh God! Yeah, that was quite. Yeah, I had uh, Polly for a while, the crystal skull, and uh, was playing with it. And, and it was one of the ancient scrolls. It was amethyst. Uh, the owner had some serious problems with it, and she couldn't deal with the energy and, and didn't know what to do with it. And so, her group decided that it should come here. And so, when it came on the land, I actually was told it had to go through some ceremony and be cleansed. So the first thing we did was bury it for three days, and we had many earthquakes all over the area. It was just crazy. And the whole land here has amethyst underneath it, so I think the skull was, was programming or being programmed by it. And and so we took it out of, out of there, and we put it underneath the water, underneath the waterfall, and we just had total monsoon rains during that time. It was the, the heaviest rains I've ever seen. And we took it out of the water, and we put it in the air, you know, up by the pyramid, above the pyramid, just put it up high. And we had all these weird freak windstorms, and we had these little mini tornadoes everywhere, like whirlwinds. And one of them actually went in the house, and we had a whirlwind in the middle of the house. And to me, that's impossible. How do you? Yeah, how, how did that do happen? A whirlwind inside of a house. I mean, you can have wind blow. Or whatever, but it went. Uh, papers were flying everywhere. It was it was pretty crazy. Uh, and then the last thing, the fire summer, we had a big fire. We had it facing into the fire, and uh, we had a pretty large group there. And this cloud appeared over the ranch, and it started putting on a light show with every color light you can, you know, just unbelievable light show coming from this one cloud. And uh, uh, there was a. Some some uh, reporters here actually that had cameras and and uh, the uh, it was amazing. One of them ran to grab his camera finally after watching it for ten minutes, and he pulled all of his camera gear out out of the trunk and lifted it up to film it, and it stopped and just disappeared. You know, so apparently it didn't want to be filmed. But yeah, it was pretty crazy. Uh, I noticed that you could actually use this skull as an amplifier and if you were of the right frequencies you could actually communicate and and work with these skulls but again your your consciousness has to resonate to a certain level and you have to have real pure intent or these things are not a blessing anymore they're like a uh you know they're a pain in the butt actually (laughs) if you don't know what you're doing so what do, what would you suggest uh, – we're, we're coming close to the end of the hour here, and I want to make sure that I get this one in. Uh, what, do you, what would you suggest for somebody who wants to clear for themselves? How, what process would they go through? Is there some focus that they should have, uh, some mantra that they can come up with for themselves to help clear? Yeah, we've got it in the book, Reunion with Source. I also put it in the second book, Becoming Gods. Uh, and all the information is in there about what you're clearing, how to clear it, and the process. It's kind of a of a long, complicated process because because uh, it has a lot to do with conviction and understanding what you're doing and things like that and, and pure intention. So... To give a quick overview, uh, I can talk a little bit about it, but I would suggest people get, you know, Reunion with Source or one of the other books that have all the information in there so they understand it. But, you know, basically what you do is you start off by calling in 
uh, master teacher or main teacher and guide that you feel comfortable with. And, and there's many of them. Every culture has been given, you know, a son of God, you might say, or a prophet or, or, or a, a very high master. They, they come to all cultures. And so whether you call on Buddha or Kuan Yin or, you know, Ezekiel, one of the other prophets, we use Ezekiel a lot, uh, which is an ascended version of Ezekiel or Mary or, you know, the Syrian, the felines. Uh, there's so many different beings you can call out there uh, to assist you in this process. But you, you bring them in first. And then you welcome many other entities in love and light that need healing, and you just tell them they're healed and forgiven, lifted and enlightened, filled and surrounded in the Christ light and the Christ love, and then you have these masters take them to their perfect place and clear out. And then you ask that all thought forms, living mental concepts be dissolved, lifted and healed, you know, sever all karmic ties, all psychic bonds. Uh, there, it's a long process, and but you go through that process, that's enough to to bring relief to the situations, but it's it's important to learn this process because you can clear your family, you can you you know you can go into buildings and clear buildings, you can clear your workforce, uh, you know you can use these techniques to 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 make sure that things go a lot smoother. And what I've seen is is a good indicator that there are unseen negative influences is if you're having a lot of multiple accidents. You know, a lot of times you're having chest pain. You know, those are real possessing type entities. You feel them in the chest. Uh, you'll feel solar plexus, like just a real ugly gut feeling sometimes comes with them around. Uh, or even, you know, a lot of sickness and things like that can come about from these entities. So, uh, you know, they have mental and emotional bodies, just they don't have physical bodies, and you do too. So they... Their thoughts and emotions can actually become part of your reality if you're not aware of it. So it, it's very good to focus on, you know, your focus on love and joy and bliss, focus on seeing yourself whole and healthy, I invite the higher beings in to assist you in this process, and, uh, and, and just go from there, basically. Yeah, I would definitely suggest anybody that uh, is interested in this uh, pick up at least that reunion with source book, the 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 description in there and the 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 way to do it is fantastic. Uh, so and also, uh, uh, what other what other material have you got out there? Oh, I hear you're making another uh, you're making another uh, uh, DVD. Is that correct? Yeah, we're in the middle of that right now. We're making another DVD with a lot of the latest footage in it. Uh, you know, we've got uh, Khan, you know, in there and myself as well. Photographs of of the other beings that he's actually called in uh, that have been here for quite some time. He photographs them with his cell phone, actually, and then he, later he got a camera. So we've actually taken photographs of Kuan Yin and Kazekiel, the being I work with, which is a huge golden light with wings. And, uh, and we've gotten Mary, some great photographs of Mary appearing here at the ranch, and some felines as well, some of the... Uh, six-dimensional felines that we've been working with that actually been appearing. Uh, we don't have any Palladian photos yet, but I imagine those are around the corner if the jets leave us alone and quit coming after the craft. So anyway, <laughs> we probably will have some of those photos. And, and, you know, I'm looking forward to just having a ship land, walking on board with the camera and having a one-on-one -on -one sit down with them and just say, what's up? Just just lay it out, you know, what's going down. That'd be and, awesome. Uh, you know, that's my dream. Yeah, we. I think we all have the same dream of, of, just being able to to talk with them. I was. I remember I was telling my wife I would love to be able to go somewhere and study, um, alien alien sociology and just how their culture evolved and how they did things and. But uh, I know that Pleiadians. When I talked with one of them once, it was pretty human. It was very humbling, and. Uh, you know, because I was talking to them, and they said, oh, you've got a lot to let go of. You know, you, you're still running ownership of jealousy programs and, and old, pro, really old programs that are very limited and very uh, lacking in, in love. You know, they're more based on fear. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really interesting. When I first connected with them, they said, you know, you've got some, some old wounds and traumas and some old programs you've got to let go of before we can 
really come through you in a clear way. And, and so it's been quite a process, you know, just these contacts. Where where can I go to find your material or if I wanted to go to the ranch, where's the best place people to be able to contact you? They needed to contact uh, best, Yeah, the website's the best. Just go to eceti.org, E-C-E-T-I dot org, and all the information is on there, the phone numbers. Uh, we are getting ready to close down probably after Thanksgiving. Uh, we'll probably be shutting things down. We've got some snowstorms coming in, so... Uh, you know, later on in the winter, it's just, it's pretty hard to even get in and out, so. And then you open up, uh, you reopen up around February, March? Yeah, we're very limited. We'll have some, you know, people will keep coming now and then, but, you know, if you do come, be sure and get a four-wheel drive, and uh, so we don't have to dig you out, you know. <laughs> or or fly in, in a spaceship. It's the best way. That works. <laughs> Yeah, that works. Maybe when the big snows come, they'll just drop down because there won't be anybody to drive in and, and uh, <laughs> mess with us. There you go. Well, James, hey, we really appreciate you uh, coming on for our inaugural show here. Uh, it's been a, a fantastic interview. I think this has uh, gone very well. And it's never Great. long yeah, enough. Thanks. thanks for having me on and keep up the good work, you guys. You know, it's an awesome show you got going. All right. Okay, well, uh, if anybody wants to check out our material, uh, you can uh, check the links here at BBS to our website or just go directly there. It's uh, Conscious TV, conscious-tv.com, and uh, our archives will be up there and uh, some other interesting information people might find uh, uh, informative. Uh, so you got anything there, uh, Ramon? I was just going to say, make sure you catch us every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Uh, West, sorry, uh, Pacific Time, and that's 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and 10 a.m. Tokyo Time, which is my time now. Um, yeah, that's it, and once again, thank you, James, and we had a wonderful time. All right. All right. Good night, guys. Good night. Great.